The current gold standard treatment for lymphedema is complete decongestive therapy, or CDT. CDT is made up of two phases of treatment, and it's important for someone to go through both phases for optimal results. My name is Kelly, and I'm a physical therapist that specializes in oncology and lymphedema. And in this video, I'm gonna break down the treatment components for lymphedema. Before we begin, make sure that you subscribe down below for weekly new videos. You can also join us on Instagram for more related content, or you can check out my website for more resources. So we're going to briefly talk about each of these components, but if you want to learn more, you can learn in-depth treatment for arm and breast or chest lymphedema in my breast cancer rehab program and more about leg or lower body lymphedema in my leg lymphedema treatment program. They both go highly in depth with demonstrations of each component of treatment, including bonus options and detailed videos with easy to follow handouts. You can learn more about both of these programs on my website, which I will link in the description box down below as well as up above. So let's talk about treatment of each of these phases. The first phase of CDT is the reduction phase. It ranges from two to five sessions of therapy a week and averages three to four weeks in duration. This phase aims to reduce the volume and decrease the swelling while softening any thickened tissue called fibrosis. This phase is likely to include the following. First, manual lymphatic drainage, or MLD. So MLD is a gentle massage technique that helps to move fluid or lymphatic fluid out of an affected area or region. The therapist does this technique in a specific sequence to stimulate the lymph nodes and then move the lymph fluid through lymphatic vessels and out of that area. The therapist may also spend time with semi-firmer techniques to help soften fibrosis or harden thickened tissue to then improve lymphatic flow. The next component of phase one CDT is compression bandaging. So short stretch bandages are a specific type of bandage that are used to help reduce fluid and swelling. And these are different than an ACE bandage, which one may find at a drugstore, as those are considered long stretch and they're more likely to cause a tourniquet or skin issue. So we wanna stick with the short stretch. We also use various foams and paddings to use under the bandages for skin safety and also to add more layers for more effective compression and then reduction of the swelling. So there are many options on the market and a therapist may trial different types and layers throughout phase one based on how someone's skin and tissue respond. The third component of phase one is exercise. So the therapist will teach the patient exercises that are specific to lymphedema and allow an individual to be successful, safe, and consistent with. The goal is to find healthy ways to move and activate muscles because muscles assist in pumping lymphatic fluid in the body. So if able, it will likely be prescribed to complete exercises while wearing compression bandages during this phase. And then we're gonna talk about skin care. So during the evaluation, the therapist assesses one's skin and tissue health and will provide education on ways to help protect the skin, to help prevent infection, and just maintain good skin integrity to avoid skin breakdown or wounds. Lymphedema may increase the risk for infection, and the quickest way to obtain an infection is an opening in the skin, making skin care really an essential piece of lymphedema therapy and CDT. The CDT will be different for each person and it really should be tailored to each individual and their medical needs. Again, I talked about two to five sessions a week for three to four weeks. Some people might do five sessions or five sessions a week for six or seven weeks. It's going to vary based on that person. So in addition to what I spoke about, there might be other types of treatment that are also included to assist with reducing the volume of the limb or the body area. A therapist will continue to monitor and then reassess the swelling in the tissue through different exams and measurements taken every one to two weeks or so. And then once the volumes of the limb and the swelling is reduced as much as possible and there's really a plateau that's reached, then it's time to transition to phase two of CDT. The second phase of CDT is the maintenance phase. This phase starts at the end of phase one and continues long-term. 
The goal of phase two is to maintain this reduction or the reduced volume that we got as a goal in phase one. And then the goal from here is to focus on self-management. So this phase may include the following. First, self-manual lymphatic drain, or self-MLD, is taught by the therapist to the patient using that same gentle massage-like technique to help stimulate the lymph nodes and move lymph fluid through the lymphatic vessels. And this is encouraged to be done daily if able. The next piece or component is compression garments. So although compression bandaging, like we talked about in phase one, is an option in phase two to manage lymphedema, it can be better due to being bulky and making it difficult to move around to use compression garments instead. So using compression garments, compression sleeves, they're really used as maintenance garments as they help to maintain or contain the fluid from building back up. There are garments for the daytime as well as nighttime options. And someone might have a combination. And again, there's just so many on the market that someone will have to probably trial and error a few different kinds. I do have a lot of videos on my channel talking about different garments that you can check out if you wanna learn more information. Another component of phase two is also exercise. So the patient will be encouraged to continue with the exercises that the therapist taught them in phase one. And we also wanna to continue to find different kinds of activities that are enjoyable, that someone can be consistent with because routine exercise is essential, not only for lymphedema, but also for overall health. Another piece of phase two is skincare as well. So self skin checks should be done daily or multiple times a week just to look for scratches, cuts, or openings in the skin. If there are any found, it's really important to take care of these to help lower the risk of infection. Then if any new skin or tissue changes are found, along with any signs or symptoms of infection, it's crucial to seek medical attention right away. Now a new component we didn't talk about in phase one that's used in phase two are pneumatic compression pumps or devices. So if long-term management needs to be very consistent due to the nature of the lymphedema, then a therapist may assist the patient in obtaining a pneumatic compression pump or device. So compression pumps are medical devices with wearable sleeves with chambers inside. And then these chambers fill with air to create a comfortable compression on the arm or the leg. And then they fill and empty in a sequential sequence similar to MLD. The pumps are often worn for about an hour a day to help take place of MLD, and they can help work to reduce any increase in fluid or swelling that may fluctuate. The second phase of CDT will also vary for each person and will change and evolve based on changes in one's condition. So during this phase, one will likely follow up periodically with their therapist to continue to monitor and assess for any changes. If needed for a flare-up or progression, a patient may return to phase one after being in phase two as a form of a tune-up, I say, to assist in then re-reducing any increased swelling, softening any new fibrotic tissue, and then getting back into phase two when they can. And then long-term, after someone has completed lymphedema therapy, they will continue semi-independently with that phase two CDT. So as I mentioned, it's important that the patient returns for follow-up appointments just to monitor for progress and make any necessary adjustments to their treatment plan and their home program. For some, this may be every three to six months, while others may wait one to two years. It's just going to vary and depend on the severity of the lymphedema and then again, someone's overall health. The patient must follow the therapist's recommendations and practice self-care techniques at home to manage their lymphedema. With proper treatment and self-care, patients can often effectively manage their lymphedema and improve their function and their quality of life. So these are the main components of lymphedema treatment. Be sure to check out the programs on my website for more in-depth support and resources, because again, treatment isn't a one size fits all. And it's important to test out each of these to find out what works best for you. And also a certified lymphedema therapist can also help determine which may be best as well. Otherwise, I hope you all found this video helpful and we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.